one of the major challenges in the field of complex system is the understanding of the phenomena of turbulence. However, there is no successful theory for turbulence. This phenomena can be understood using the Navier-Stokes equation, which is a nonlinear partial differential equation. In 1939, the Dutch scientist Berger first simplified the Navier-Stokes equation dropping the pressure term. The term or the equation containing the time derivative, nonlinear term and the diffusion term is known as Berger's equation. Generally, in Berger's equation, the external force field is not present. There are many application of Berger's equation in applied mathematics, namely in gas dynamics, fluid dynamics, traffic flow, nonlinear acoustics flow, etc. Therefore, this module or the module 4 of chapter 10 is devoted to the study of Berger's equation. The entire module is divided into three sections. In the first section, we shall discuss about or solve the linear Berger equation. In the second section, we shall try to find the traveling wave solution of Berger's equation. Finally, we shall find the exact solution of Berger's equation using the cole hopf transformation. Now we are going to our slide show. First, I am defining the Berger's equation. This is a simple model of turbulence and it can be derived from Navier-Stokes equation. The Berger's equation in one dimension is written as del u del t plus u del u del x equals to nu del 2 u del x square. One dimension means I want to say that there is only one space variable which is denoted by small x. Now equation 1, nu represent the kinematic viscosity. So this is the dissipation term and the nonlinear term is u del u del x. So Berger's equation is a balance between the time evolution, nonlinearity and the diffusion term. It also to be noted that the equation is parabolic if nu not equals to 0 and hyperbolic if nu equals to 0. Now we are going to solve equation 1 after linearizing it. So the linear Berger's equation can be written after dropping the nonlinear term as del u del t equals to nu del 2 u del x square where t is the time variable and x runs from minus infinity to plus infinity. That means x can take any value in the real axis. We have also the initial condition for u, u at time t equals to 0 equals to e1 for x less than 0 and it takes a constant another constant value u2 for x greater than 0. Now we are going to solve equation 2 together with the initial condition which is given in equation 3. Since equation 2 is a linear equation with constant coefficient, we can apply any methods. In particular, one can use Fourier transform method to find solution. So if we use Fourier transform method and e use the initial condition 3, it is easy to find that solution can be written in the form u equals to half of u1 plus u2 minus half of u1 minus u2 into error function of x divided by 2 square root nu t. This shows that the presence of diffusion term nu del u del x square is to smooth out the initial distribution like mu 2 to the power minus half. And you can also verify that 
if x going to minus infinity u tends to the constant value 1 and if x goes to plus infinity u tends to the another constant value u 2. Therefore, solution 4 satisfies the initial conditions. Now, I want to mention that the absence of the diffusion term in 1 leads to, so if we drop the diffusion term in 1, so if we go back to equation 1, that means if you drop the second order term, then the equation becomes a first order nonlinear wave equation. And we know the solution of first order wave equation which I have discussed in module 1 of this chapter that this gives a shock wave solution or in other words the nonlinearity leads to the gradual steepening and eventually breaking of the waves. In fact, equation 1 combines two opposite effects of nonlinearity and diffusion. In the absence of diffusion, the resulting equation which I already told you this is a first order equation and it gives a shock wave solution. But due to the diffusion term, the shock wave solution does not exist and the shock wave solution is smoothed out by the term nu del to u del x square. Now, we are considering the case where the convective term is linearized. That means, the convective term is u del u del x. Here, we are taking the linear convective term. That means, we are taking the convective term as alpha into del u del x where alpha is a constant. So, we are going to solve the equation 5. Again, we are assuming a plane wave solution of this equation. So, solution is assumed in the form u equals to a e to the power i k x minus omega t, where imaginary part of omega equals to minus nu k square, which is less than 0 for nu greater than 0. Now, if we substitute 6 in equation 5, we obtain the solution in the form u equals to a e to the power minus nu k square t into e to the power i k into x minus c t, which is written in equation number 7. Now, this solution represent a diffusive wave with wave number k and phase velocity c. And if you see the amplitude of the wave which is a times e to the power minus nu k square t, it decays exponentially with time and the decay time is given by t 0 equals to nu k square to the power minus 1. And this becomes smaller and smaller as k increases with fixed nu. And if nu is greater than 0, the solution becomes unstable. Thus, the waves of smaller wavelength decay faster than the those of larger wavelengths or in other words for a fixed wave number k, the decay time decreases as nu increases. So, the waves of a given wavelength becomes weaker with larger nu. And the quantity nu can be regarded as a measure of diffusion. So, after a sufficiently long time, only the 
disturbances of long wavelength will survive. And I have already told that if mu is nu is less than 0, solution 7 tends to infinity that means the solution becomes unstable. Now, I am trying to find the traveling wave solution of the nonlinear Berger's equation. So, to analyze that, to find that we assume a traveling wave solution in the form u x t equals to u of j, where j equals to x minus u t. That means we are assuming a traveling wave solution which is moving with speed capital U and this is to be determined and it is also given that the waveform with this property, it has this property that it tends to asymptotically to a constant value u1 as j tends to minus infinity and it tends to another constant value u2 as j tends to plus infinity. Now, to find the traveling wave solution, we substitute 8 in the nonlinear Berger's equation which is given in equation number 1. We also assume that u1 is greater than u2. So, if we substitute 8 in 1, this is equation 1, this is the nonlinear Berger's equation. So, if you substitute here, we get the ordinary differential equation minus u du dj plus u du dj minus nu d2 u dj square equals to 0 or if we integrate this with respect to j we get minus u capital U u j plus half u square minus nu d u d j equals to a where a is our integrating constant. So, from this equation we can find the value of d u d j as d u d j equals to 1 by 2 nu into u square minus 2 capital U small u minus 2 a which is given by equation number 9. Now, this shows that there are two roots. If you see the right hand side of this equation, this is a quadratic equation in u. So, d u d j will be 0 when the right hand side is 0. So, and we know that when j tends to plus minus infinity, u takes constant values. So, for those constant values, du dj equals to 0. Therefore, the roots of the quadratic equation u square minus 2 capital U small u minus 2a equals to 0 are small u1 and small u2. Solving this quadratic equation, one can get the value of capital U as half of u1 plus u2 and the value of capital A which is product of two roots u1, u2. A can be written in terms of product of two roots. So, A equals to minus half u1, u2. So, from equation 10 you can see that capital U that means the wave speed is the average of two speed at asymptotic states that means at j equals to plus minus infinity. Therefore, the from equation 9 we can find that the value of 2 nu du dj equals to u square minus 2 u u minus 2a. 
since it has two roots u1 u2 it can be factorized as u minus u1 into u minus u2 then we integrate then we separate the variables that means du by u minus u1 into u minus u2 equals to d j by 2 nu or j by 2 nu equals to integration of du by u1 minus u into u minus u2 with a negative sign and uh, we can integrate this after integration it gives its value is equals to 1 by u1 minus u2 log of u1 minus u divided by u minus u2. Therefore, our solution u therefore, our solution u can be obtained from the first line as u equals to u1 plus u2 e to the power j by 2 nu u1 minus u2 divided by 1 plus e to the power j by 2 nu into u1 minus u2. So, it can be written as u2 plus u1 minus u2 by 1 plus e to the power j by 2 nu u1 minus u2. Thus, the solution can be written in the form uj equals to half of u1 plus u2 minus half of u1 minus u2 10 hyperbolic j by 2 nu u1 minus u2. So, if you look at this solution and if we plot u as function of j, the solution will li looks like this at j equals to minus infinity its value is u1, at j equals to plus infinity its value is constant which is u2. u is also monotonic function, so it will be like this. Since u1 is greater than u2, so it will be monotonically decreasing function of j and at the point j equals to 0, it takes the average value of u1 and u2 that you can see from the figure this. So, this is the travelling wave solution, this is the wave profile. Now, as u1 greater than u2, that we have explained already. So, this is uh, decreasing uh, function of j and the shape of the waveform is significantly affected by the diffusion coefficient nu. If, if you see the solution, the shape of the curve depends on the parameter nu and this is the diffusion coefficient. So, this diffusion cofi coefficient makes the wave profile smooth. Therefore, shape is significantly affected by the diffusion coefficient nu. The diffusion process prevents the gradual distortion of the wave profile, so it does not break. On the other hand, in the absence of diffusion coefficient nu, the wave profile suffers from gradual distortion and stiffening and hence it breaks and develop a shock that we have already discussed in module 1. Therefore, in Berger's equation the nonlinearity and the diffusion term balance each other to make a stable wave profile. In last two sections, we have discussed about the solution of linear Berger's equation and we also found the solution of nonlinear Berger's equation. But it is to be mentioned that it is possible to find exact solution of Berger's equation. In 1950, the scientist Cole and Hoff separately discovered a transformation using which the nonlinear Berger's equation can be transformed to a linear diffusion equation. Now, I am going to describe that transformation. I have already discussed about the nonlinear Berger's equation, which is written in equation number 1. Now, I am going to solve that equation 
together with the initial condition u at time t equals to 0 equals to capital Fx. Now we write equation 13 or the nonlinear Burgers equation in the form del u del t plus del del x of half u square minus nu del u del x equals to 0. This can be considered as the compatibility condition for the existence of the function psi such that u can be written as del psi del x and the term within the bracket that means mu nu del u del x minus half u square equals to del psi del t which are written in equation number 15. Now, if we eliminate u from the two equations in 15, we get an equation in terms of psi which is written in equation 16. Nu del to psi del x square minus half del psi del x square equals to del psi del t. Now, we put the transformation. Now, that means we are trying to transform the variable psi to another variable phi such that psi equals to minus 2 nu log phi. And we know that u equals to del psi del x. So, in terms of phi u becomes minus 2 nu by phi del phi del x. And this particular transformation is called Kohl-Hopf transformation. Now, using this transformation, we are trying to write equation 16 in terms of the variable phi. Thus, in terms of variable phi, it becomes del phi del t equals to nu del to phi del x square. And you can see that this is a uh, linear second order equation with constant coefficient. So, it is very easy to solve and this equation contains only the diffusion term. The nonlinear terms vanishes. So, we are going to solve equation 18 together with the initial condition let phi is described at time t equals to 0 by the function capital phi. But we have the value of u at the initial point t equals to 0 as capital F. Now, we are going to establish the relation between the function capital phi and capital F. So, capital Fx equals to u x at time t equals to 0. So, that equals to in terms of phi minus 2 nu by phi del phi del x at time t equals to 0. So, from this equation if we integrate we can obtain the value of phi x 0 equals to e to the power minus 1 by 2 nu integration capital F alpha d alpha which is written in equation number 19. Therefore, we have to find the solution of equation 18 together with the initial condition 19. And it is very easy to find the solution of that initial value problem. So, phi can be written as phi equals to 1 divided by 2 square root pi nu t integration minus infinity to plus infinity capital phi e to the power minus x minus j square by 4 nu t, t dj which is written in equation 20 and capital phi is given by the equation 19. Now, substituting the value of capital phi in equation 20, we obtain the solution in the form phi equals to 1 divided by 2 square root pi nu t integration e to the power minus f by 2 nu dz, where 
f equals to x minus di square by 2 t plus integration 0 to xi f alpha d alpha and del phi del x is equals to minus 1 divided by 4 nu square root pi nu t integration x minus xi by t e to the power minus f by 2 nu d xi. Therefore, the exact solution of Berger's initial value problem is obtained from 17. This is u, we solve the value of phi or the expression for phi. So, if you substitute that here in 17, you obtain the solution which is written in equation number 23. So, here you have to substitute the value of phi and the value of del phi del x. So, that gives this solution. So, in this way we can obtain the exact solution of nonlinear Berger's equation using Cole Hopp transformation. Thus, in module 4 of chapter 10, we have discussed about the Berger's equation where we have considered both nonlinear terms and the diffusion term. The role of nonlinearity is to steepening and distortion of the wave front, where the diffusion term smoothen out the wave profile. Therefore, the joint effect of nonlinearity and diffusion makes a stable wave front. Now we end this module.